we released a major update for RPverb 2. In the upper right corner, you will find the control menu. Inside this control menu, you can select the different user interface sizes we have added now. Once you select your size, reload your song or reload your plugin. Then in the lower section, you also can check for updates. And in case there is another update, it directs you to the home page. The other features you also can find on the back panel, but in the control menu, you also can switch on off particular functions. What is also new is the bank manager. In the upper section, you can select the bank manager. And as you can see, it gives you overview of all the banks and different presets and will help you to create your own bank folder. What we also updated is the lower section of RPverb with the envelope follower, envelope and LFO mod section. We did rearrange this layout of it, but also added some cool new features. Let's start with the envelope follower. The envelope follower you can see as an audio gate for making, for instance, the gated drum sounds. Let's play some. As you can hear, it's now on the snare drum. When I bypass, you can hear the, the sound. It's a normal snare and here we have the envelope follower, which is also used on the audio for this noise gate type of things. So you see the envelope attack hold release is also tempo synced. We can put it off and make it also in milliseconds. And you can hear that there is an audio gate. Well, this is the amount for the audio gate. Let's make it a bit longer. But the cool thing with RPverb 2 is that this envelope follower, this envelope, you also can use for other parameters. And you can see here that the amount 1 is controlling the reverb length and destination 2 is reverb size. So uh, it goes far beyond the regular audio gate uh, in RPverb 2 in how you can use it. So let's try and move it around. So really make the option to make totally different sounds. Very experimental, but also cool to beef up, for instance, this snare. So if I bypass it again, it's a normal snare. And now it really gets a nice, spacey little room. Okay, one of the other new features in the envelope follower is that you not only can use the regular input, but also the side input for side chain types of sounds or even the output. Now I select the side chain input. I have a, uh, a hole and the side input. I need to arrange this up here in Cubase to, and you see that the subboom base one is now controlling, is now the sidechain input. Let's play it. Yeah, you see. Put in. It. So now here it comes in, and now the the bass does do the input triggering of this envelope. So, okay, now bypass off, and you can hear it. Again, you here you can control again the reverb planks. Making some very weird affix sounds. Reverb sounds. Okay, let's make it a bit more. So you see now the bass line is controlling the reverb audio. by using this, by triggering using this envelope here, the envelope follower. 
Of course, it's pretty much for experimental things, but yeah, it's cool to do things out of the box and make your tracks uh, yeah, very different. Okay, maybe you think, okay, this is a cool FX, but I don't want to use it all the time. So and now I created an example, which is a normal reverb, and um, I put off the other parameter, so uh, the, the envelope follower doesn't change the other ones anymore. But what I will do now is automate this audio dial here. So that's what you can do in your music host, is simply record this dial. So when I um, play this again, I will fade in this audio to add the effects on a different moment. So this is a way where you can use it in a very creative way. So this is the envelope follower, which is far more than a regular audio gate and offers a lot of additional features to sculpt the sound and think out of the box. And if you go to, to the bank manager again, you can see that there is a bank, site input one, insert a bank with some sound examples you can use for using in combination with the side input. The next thing which is new is this envelope and its new trigger option. By clicking on the icon, you uh, make the envelope activate and default it's triggering on the audio trigger. And then you have the envelope, which can be also tempo synced and even looped. And you can see here it's controlled on the mix. So what I did with this preset, I did set the dry wet mix fully to dry. And now the envelope controls this mix parameter. Let's give it a try. Of course, you can see, I need to adjust this envelope so that it's musical useful. And once it's triggered, I can make it loop. So let's add here a one eighth loop. Or maybe, maybe, may make it tempo sync. So let's see what happens here. And I play again. Yeah, you see, you need a lot of tweaking to get your results. And I use here the mix, uh, the global mix, which is in the top section, but all the other parameters are also available. What also is an option is, and that's new, is that you can MIDI note trigger or use a controller, for instance, to trigger the envelope or host trigger. Host trigger means the moment I hit play, it does trigger the envelope, and in this case, it's looped. So let's play this again. So you see, it's tempo synced, it's one eighth looped, and it doesn't mean that everything is useful, but I guess you get my point what you can do. So host trigger is once you hit play. A MIDI note trigger makes that if you hit the MIDI keyboard that it triggers this envelope, okay? What is of course important is that you connect the MIDI to the FX. And this is how it's done in Cubase. It well could be in your music host that it totally works in a different way. So here's Cubase and here I connect a track which is a MIDI track and you see here the keyboard, which generates the MIDI, and then the output, so this MIDI track goes out to the voice sample one insert of RPVerb2, so the MIDI input of RPVerb2. Of course, you need to have the right MIDI setting. Uh, here it sends out on channel one, and RPVerb2 is set to Omni, so and uh, there it doesn't make uh, any difference which MIDI channel comes in, it will respond to it. So once uh, I select this uh, uh, track and then I play the keyboard, 
And that one controls then now the envelope. So let's play again and you see the green light light up. This green light lights up once it is triggered by the MIDI note. Now, as you can see, it's now looped, but I also can make it not looped and that it just plays once. And let's see how that sounds. I'll play back, go back again. And so watch this green light, that's once I hit the note. So Willy controls the mix, so again. Once I hit the note, the reverb kicks in and fades away with the setting of this envelope. So also this can be used as a very creative tool. Or I could say, hmm, let's change the reverb length. So you don't see it here, but it's the reverb length. And now I need to have, of course, a little bit different mix setting up here. So now the voice, the reverb is changed by hitting a note. Suddenly the reverb lengths uh, changes. So let's see how that sounds. Did you hear that? Okay, let's make the mix a little bit more to the reverb. So now the reverb is more... And you really hear that the once I hit the note, the envelope controls this reverb length with this amount one open fully. Okay, let's play it again. Live eternally inside it. So did you hear that? Very special FX and by changing here this setting here you can yeah make your own special things it's making reverbs very different so as you notice yeah this envelope very creative especially for the producers who like think out of the box creating creative presets. We have in the bank manager, also here, example sounds, default presets, which are uh, MIDI note, envelope reverb. So here we have some examples what you could do. Of course, you always need to yeah, personalize the, uh, the presets to make it fit in your music style. Yeah, and then we have the LFO mod section here with a LFO, and you can see here three destinations. And in this preset, the LFO is already connected to the reverb volume. The LFO you set active by clicking on this icon and you see it starts running. It is set now to host trigger. Once I hit play in my music host program, the waveform resets to zero and always starts at zero. So if I play now this example, I play play, and you see that this little waveform jumps back to the start, and that is the zero point from this waveform. Yeah, and you can see that this LFO caused a wobble inside of it. And uh, as mentioned, we use the, uh, we have the option to use MIDI as well. So what I could do is uh, connect MIDI to RPVerb 2. I use the modulation wheel, for instance, to increase the speed of this LFO. So this is the second amount. I use modulation wheel to control the LFO speed. So let's start again, simply to show you how creative, you can use RP Verb 2. So you really can hear change of the wobble gets more in speed. Um, 
Yet another option is that you use again MIDI note trigger. And you see, once I hit the note, the LFO starts playing. If I let go, it stops playing. So this is really handy for having the LFO only at a given moment. So let's try this again with the same vocal thing. So you see, once I hit the note, it starts playing. And of course, I can combine it. I also can combine this together with the modulation wheel. So opening the modulation wheel and play the note. So this offers a lot of creative things for your music creation. And especially if you uh, use the MIDI note trigger or you use the modulation wheel to control the LFO speed, this all gives you the option to uh, blend in these type of FX. And as you can see, uh, we have different waveforms also possible. So I also could say saw up and let's try this saw up and how that sounds with this sound. Well, the sinus waveform was a bit more exciting, but yeah, it's up to you. If you are a creative reverb user, this is really a very cool feature to use it. As mentioned in the bank manager, we have this default preset insert with default presets. And the last one is modulation wheel reverse mix. It's the case that um, a unique feature of RP Verb 2 is that you can reverse the reverb sound. And yeah, you see here's a mix between the normal reverb sound and the reversed sound. So now I play it only with the reverb sound. The mix is fully to the left here. Now I turn fully to the right and then you only hear the reverse sound. And of course, you can mix in between to make a balance between these two sounds. But it's cool if you, for instance, just add the reversed on particular spots inside your song. Well, for this, you can use the automation and record this dial in your music host program. But also you could use MIDI. And I have now the modulation wheel connected to the reverse mix. And I will use the modulation wheel for it. So watch here, it's my modulation wheel. And I will mix in the reverse sound into the uh, normal reverb sound. This is a way to use creatively, for instance, this modulation wheel in RP Verb 2. So, yeah, well, th there's much to mention uh, outside these new features, what you can do with RP Verb 2. Check on the introduction video about the reverse, how that works. And of course, yeah, RP Reverb is very unique. It has some very unique features like a pre distortion. Uh, yeah, and what I just uh, showed to you, the LFO, the mod matrix, this envelope, and the envelope follower. Yeah, all very cool features for the creative reverb uh, users. Enjoy RP Verb 2.